If you're running one of the latest betas in HP tuners, you've probably heard about this new torque request rates underneath driver demand. Let's dive into it. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage and welcome to another episode in the Test in Tune series. It's been a while, but we've got a good topic to dial in on today. Before we do that though, let me go ahead and get this out of the way. Thank you to all the new subscribers out there. Thank you to all the new patrons and thank you for sharing the link. Remember, tuning101.com brings you right to our YouTube page. Quick, easy, super easy to remember. Just throw it out there. Let everybody know about it. That all being said, we are uh, you know, doing a limited time offer right now where the people that have been asking for email tunes, I've got a few up there. They're on the website, goatropegarage.com. Check them out. You know, 500 bucks, but that gets you a year of support, uh, gets you three retunes in case you change mods, add mods, remove mods, things like that. And it's going to be one-on-one. -on -one. This is not one of those canned email tunes that you see out there for 250 bucks where they just pull one off the shelf, send it to you, and they don't care whether or not it's optimized. This is going to be specific for your vehicle. More details on GoatRopeGarage.com. But today, we are going to be talking about the new driver demand tables that came out in the betas a couple weeks ago. Uh, you know, these have been things that have been asked for for a long time because the throttles on the Gen 5s in particular, the torque-based vehicles, are very slow to respond sometimes somebody finally sussed out the tables where there is torque values associated with those so we're going to play with them that being said this is stuff that could be potentially dangerous so insert disclaimer right here this video is intended for educational purposes only improper tuning can cause catastrophic mechanical damage and you should do your own research before attempting any changes like this to a vehicle attempt custom tuning at your own risk Okay, now that the disclaimer is out of the way, let's dive into the tune. Take a look exactly what I'm talking about. If you go into engine, torque management, driver demand on the fifth gens, you're going to see these new tables. If you do not have these tables, update to the latest beta. They should be in there if you are on a torque-based platform. The first thing that we need to talk about, though, is the difference between immediate and predicted torque. We haven't really dove deep into this because they kind of act... Well, not necessarily the same, but they accomplish the same things. The predicted torque is basically a torque value that is predicted based off of airflow. It is considered the slow response torque. The immediate is spark and fuel. And so if you go into things like fuel cut or rev limiter, the immediate torque is what takes over because it responds faster. It is a higher rate torque adjustment than the predicted. Now, that being said, we're not going to get into a torque-based tuning video on this one because there are some that I've got out there already. You know, just go over to the uh, uh, tuning playlist and on the generation-specific ones you can find in there. But what we're looking at today is the torque request rate limits that are part of driver demand now. And you can see that they're enabled on here. And we've got decreasing and increasing, and those are in relation to the throttle body action. Increasing says whenever we have immediate normal, we're going to only focus on normal because we don't have tap shift on this. You can see that as soon as we give it any request, this is set up to go full torque, you know, allow this thing to open as quick as humanly possible. Now, the predicted's a little bit slower. You And what we're going to try is we're going to max out both tables then we're going to zero out both tables, and that should give us a good indication how they work. Now, decreasing is the one that everybody was more concerned about because this is the one that is going to shut the throttle body off, and so it should give you quicker throttle response in theory. Now, whether or not it's going to, we're going to find out because ideally your increasing should be maxed out and your decreasing should be mend out. And I don't know what's going to happen. We're actually going to go past zero. This will allow us to go down to negative 6,042 foot-pounds. We're going to try that out. So first things first, let's go in here. Let's max this thing out to negative 6042. Okay, and it capped at 6149. That's fine as long as it doesn't complain. And we're going to do it for both the immediate and the predicted. Zero six. Yeah, we'll just do 6041. And then we'll double check. Our immediate normal should be maxed out already at 6041. And then our predicted normal, we're going to max it out at 6041. 
So now that we've done this, I'm going to save this tune, load it up in the Super Auto, and then we are going to see how it reacts. Then we will completely inverse these, and that's where it could possibly get dangerous because the throttle may hang if we max out the decreasing torque. Stick around. Okay, so here we've got the scanner up and running. I've kind of narrowed this thing down so we can see RPM, accelerator position, throttle positions, what's in control, uh, and then engine torque versus predicted and immediate, and then what's in charge right now. So we can see our predicted engine torques on crank. Let's see if this thing will even start up like this. Okay, seems to be working all right. Everything's in idle. Everything's hitting their predicted commands right now. Uh, as you can see, our throttle is at about 5% five, 5 it looks like. Uh, okay. Okay, we're looking a little bit better on the temperature, so let's try this thing out. Let's see how quick it revs up. I'm gonna go wide open throttle, then off. Ooh, it didn't like that. We hit a limit. See, we're bouncing off of our RPM limit on the predicted engine source because the throttle is moving so fast that predicted engine torque source is stopping it because of the increasing rate. That's good to know. So if you max this table out on the predicted engine on the, uh, let's see here, predicted increasing rate, which that one was not maxed out, immediate was, you will hit an RPM limiter. Good to know. Okay, so let's go in and let's invert these things and see how they react. So we're putting uh, predicted torque, the increasing predicted to negative 6041. We're going to do the same thing for the immediate. We're going to make it negative 6041 across the board. 6041. And then on the decreasing, where these are already negative, we're going to make these positive. This could be pos potentially dangerous. Don't do this. There's no reason to do this other than for testing purposes. This is not something that you should be doing at home. Okay, I'm gonna flash this one in, I'll be right back. Okay, we've got the new tune in here. Uh, this is the one where everything's been flip-flopped. I don't know what it's gonna do, honestly, but let's fire it up and see. Okay, it runs. Okay, I'm gonna keep my finger on the trigger here in case I have to shut this thing off real quick. Oh yeah, oh no, we just went into engine power reduced. Yeah, yeah, that just does not work. We've got a nice DTC on here. Uh, let's see what it has to say. Control module redundant memory performance. It just, it did not like that at all. So didn't think that that would work, but it actually put itself into limp mode, which is good. Uh, to be safe because as I said I thought that this, this was going to create an unsafe condition We can clear this DTC And see if it'll take us out of limp mode here Okay, it did should go right back into limp mode whenever we go wide open throttle Yeah, we we just barely are able to get the throttle or get the tor the uh, Accelerator pedal moving and it throws the same DTC again. Okay good to know that's good information Let's go back in here and check it out. Now, let's go ahead and we're gonna open up a compare file from a stock 2015. And I'm gonna set it up how I think it should be set up, a, a reasonable way. And to do that, we need to look at what is stock. Now decreasing, I think decreasing can be maxed out on both, even though on the uh, immediate and predicted are not, you can see whenever we get up in the higher torque ranges, it has a lot of negative. And then if the transmission's in sixth and seventh, uh, which you gotta remember there's an offset because like park is zero or something on this setup and then one is gonna be uh, reverse or vice versa. Don't get caught up on that. But I think that the negative 6042 should be fine across the board on this. So we will go ahead and do a negative 6042 on the board. We want the throttle closing as fast as possible for immediate and predicted. 
So in predicted, we will do negative 60, 41. Now, where we get into the trouble is on the increasing. If we look at the factory increasing set point, it is already maxed out. We're at 60, 41 from the get-go. That means immediate's allowed to have as much uh, torque uh, demand as possible for the accelerator to throttle body. The predicted is where it's questionable. So the predicted numbers look pretty uh, laid back and they are for the most part. We're going to bump these up a little bit. And I think that you could probably come in here, uh, look at where they're maxed out. Did I do that right? I did not. Let's go zero here. Zero out the difference. Okay. So out in the top end, we're maxed out there. We know that doesn't work on the low end because we hit the rev limiter, but I'm going to come in here on these rows and I'm going to add 25% as a baseline starting point. And then I'm going to maybe go out, add 10% at a time still until I start running into issues where we start hitting that rev limiter on the predicted torque source again like we did earlier on. Let me go ahead and flash this one in real quick and we'll go from there. Okay, we have much more realistic numbers in these uh, torque values now. So let's go ahead and fire the truck up. We'll double check, make sure that DTC still does not exist. It should be cleared. It's not showing up on the dash, but we wanna make sure we're not bumping our heads up against that since it was clicked in there last time, we're good to go. So now let's see how the throttle reacts. Yeah, we're still getting into the RPM limit there. So I may have already over adjusted it some, uh, you know, and we're actually getting throttle hang, which is very interesting. That is weird. There you go. That's a problem with this. And then it just dropped out. Okay, so that being said, this may not have been a good idea. It's probably best for now to go back, completely load the stock values in, and flash that one in to make sure that we're being safe. So let's open up our compare, well, we've already got a compare file opened up, and let's just go ahead zero out our differences and load this one in. Very interesting. That's why we do testing like this before we just go out on the road, see what happens because we don't want to be in a potentially dangerous situation while we're driving. That's not to say that there's not some improvements that can be made on this uh, eventually, but we need to do more testing down the road to make sure that we are being absolutely safe, not putting ourselves and others in danger whenever it comes to making these adjustments on things like that. What better way to wrap this up than to go back to the stock settings, see how they respond on here, and hopefully, I'm guessing that the throttle hangs gone. Nope. That means we've got an issue somewhere else, ladies and gentlemen. Interesting. Well, I guess that's a problem for another day. We're going to have to dig into it, figure out why the throttle sometimes hangs and does not hang. Uh, scrubbing through real quick. I have a couple ideas what might be causing it. There's no torque limits. These are stock torque limits uh, on the idle, so that shouldn't be doing it. If we dive down into it, uh, I wonder if we've got some issues with the throttle area limits or the pressure ratio limits. So I went back in, dug through the tune a bit more, trying to figure out what was going on with that throttle hang. And honestly, I'm not seeing anything in there that should be doing any of that. I went and looked, compared that tune to a stock 2015 Silverado tune, and any of the things that would normally cause any kind of hanging like that, throttle value or torque values being off, airflow values, 
all that stuff is stock. So that's a little worrisome, and that is part of the reason why I always get a little bit leery about playing with throttle actuation values. They can be dangerous. Luckily, there is some sanity checks in place to make sure that if things go wonky, the ECM will catch itself, put it into limp mode like we saw in this video. That being said, please, please be super super careful do a lot of testing you don't want throttle hang uh, it is scary i have done it in the past on accident uh, there's some videos out there that i don't know if they ever made it to youtube they're probably available through the patreon link uh, so if you want to go and dig through the old patreon post as a patreon member you might be able to find the uh, videos of the super auto trying to kill me with throttle hang so that being said, I, I'm done testing this part of it. I don't know that we learned a whole lot from it other than there is some benefit to maybe maxing out the negative on the decreasing. And maybe uh, if we were to do that, I don't know. But the throttle didn't hang after the initial time. Very weird situation. There's a lot going on on these ECMs. There's a lot of stuff going on in the background that we still don't have access to that could be having issues with some of the parameters that we adjusted in there. So keep that in mind if you decide to do any editing like this. But as always, I want to thank everybody for their support. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video, share this video. Thanks for stopping by the garage. Remember, ABT, always be tuning.